What is up guys? Welcome to a brand new garage video. No racing today. As you can see, the car is still down from the Sebring uh, race event. If you haven't seen that video yet, go check that one out first and then come back to this one. But we're still waiting on the radiator. Um, unfortunately, when I ordered it, it was said to be in stock. Then they found out that it was actually on back order. So it's still a couple weeks out before getting that. Um, while it's down, I've had this wideband kind of just sitting on my counter for some time, basically um, installing the wide band to get a better understanding of the air fuel ratios, not only while I'm on track, but while I'm under some heavy driving conditions, because um, we still do have a couple little concerns with, uh, I guess we can say, you know, if it's running rich. So this will kind of give us that information. And I've kind of just neglected it for a while. I've had it here for a few months, but I, I really wasn't in a rush to get it installed. I was more prioritizing getting back on track and tr stuff like that. But we got some downtime, so let's get this bad boy installed. So the main part to the wide band is obviously the wide band auction sensor. The ones that come on your car from factory are narrow band auction sensors. They're not, going, they're not designed to feed back the amount of information we need for the wide band to do its job correctly. So you have two options. You can either, the you know, first option being the most common one, which is having someone at a muffler shop or someone you know that welds correctly to weld a new bung on your exhaust to connect your wide band auction sensor. If you have a situation like mine where I may or may not have catalytic converters, you can um, replace one of those with one of these, mainly because at this point, my rear auction sensors have been coded out of the system. So typically, if you were just to unplug one of those, you would trigger a check engine light because it's designed to read um, the catalytic converters functionality. So since mine is not doing that, I can go ahead and uh, just put this guy right into that place, save me the hassle of taking this car to the muffler shop. So we're gonna back off the driver's side rear one, um, put this one in place, and we're gonna look at where to route it. I have actually not looked at it. I've seen a couple of videos of people that do it and they go up the transmission tunnel. Um, we're gonna look at what's the most convenient way for me to do it and get that started. So first things first is backing this guy out, putting it in, um, and then figuring out all this stuff. On the iPhone, there's the driver's side. On the passenger side, there's also one right there. I'm gonna go ahead and use this one right here and back this one out. I've already loosened it. Um, I didn't have the actual uh, wrench size, so I used a crescent wrench to kind of back it out. It is tie wrapped right there, so I'm gonna cut that tie wrap in a second so I can loosen it and track the wire back up, put the new one in place, and go from there. I am gonna add some of this NTCs because this that original one was a pain in the rear to take off. So uh, just to kind of prevent it from kind of seizing on there. And I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed. So what I'm doing here basically now here is down here, right on the passenger side of the car is basically the grommet and the wires that are actually entering the vehicle into the dash. And it's right uh, behind the glove box. I'm going with this route. And instead of going through the transmission tunnel, mainly because when I give it power, I'm gonna be using a, from the fuse box here, and then I can just route it the same direction and kind of fish them both over to the driver's side and kind of keep the wiring consistent. So right now I just tested pushing it through the uh, slot. It cleared without an issue because it looks like someone was already running some, some electricity down that way. Um, and then I'm gonna drop the cable down that way, the part that connects to the OBD and cross it across there, uh, properly tie rapid so it's not in the way of anything um, and get it uh, kind of connected that way. So. Plenty of wiring, so not too concerned with that. Here's all the wiring here. So I'm just going to drop this now and then start fishing it that way. Um, that way I can make sure I connect everything properly. All right, guys. Well, we effed up. When I'm mentioning here that I'm removing my rears, I'm actually correct on that part. The problem is on my American Racing 178's long tube headers, um, after further research, my primaries have been extended into what the rear position would be and the rears are completely non-existent. So I removed the primary by accident. Once I started the car, I learned that you know, I clearly removed the primary. In your case, those are still the rear ones. You more than likely can just you know either add a bung in that area or replace one of the rears if they have been coated out. In my case, I do have to add the bung. It might have been coated out, but they're non-existent. So I do have to add a bung in some place. Gonna add it in that same area. Basically just gonna keep the lot, the wiring as is, put the primary back on. We obviously know the car is down because of the radiator. So once the radiator gets installed, 
I'll drive it over to a muffler shop, get that uh, bung welded, and then it'll just fire right back up because everything is still connected. Let's get back to the video. So now that we've got the oxygen sensor all hooked up at the bottom, I'm just gonna keep feeding this wire through here. Um, do it slowly because since the wire's been sitting naturally in its box in a circular loop, um, it tends to uh, kink up where I'm pulling from. So I gotta go be going back and forth between the front of the car and the back in here to kind of route it. And then I'm basically gonna route it through back there, across the other side, and then go up into the insurance bus. Cable is routing from, let me tell this camera to focus, from back there um, to this side panel. I still have this panel loose just to kind of give me some slack here. Um, then I just kind of routed it right up through here, right? And then I just basically pulled this boot back, grabbed it, let it, led the cable back over to this side, as you can see there. Now I'm going to kind of route it up the dash, um, which is where the gauge pod will sit over on the driver's side, on this side here. up the side and one mistake I made guys that you probably shouldn't make is I haven't wired the electricity and that cable is obviously far thinner um, and I have to route it that same direction to come back to the gauge pod which is over on the left side here um, so run them both simultaneously um, I screwed up there but I'm already committed all the way as you can see so at this point I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat the process I'll show you what uh, which one I'm gonna tap into what fuse there and by the way this is the gauge pod right here that's going to kind of go here. It's designed to, you can buy it either for the passenger side or the driver side. Um, and it's basically designed to kind of mimic that same position there um, and look really original, which I love. So um, I'll link it in the description I bought on Amazon. It's like 40 bucks. And I'll put that in the description along with the gauge and everything else. So here's the last wiring harness. Here's the power wire, obviously red, ground is black. Now all these additional wires, I was overwhelmed. It's like, where the hell do all these wires go? According to the instruction manual, these are for if you're gonna have some sort of AEM management system and stuff like that. So we're basically just gonna use the power. Now, this does not come with the kit, um, but I highly recommend this instead of kind of like live tapping into somewhere. Um, and it's basically designed to tee off on a specific fuse. I don't know if it's focusing or not. Probably not, I can see it focusing on my face. But it's designed to tee off and you basically, we're gonna replace the, uh, we're gonna put this in the spot, the seat heaters, which turn on with ignition. Um, and then what's gonna happen is a new fuse will be there side by side with the seat heater fuse on there. Um, and then you just gotta kind of tap it in here on this end. So um, I love the idea of this. I'll, again, I'll link that in the description as well because it's definitely super for me. the passenger this is right in front of like where the passenger will put his feet you can just pull it slide this little panel down you can kind of see that the seat heaters or the yeah the seat warmers are right here this 10 right here so it's a little hard to see on camera just because the camera's focusing all over the place and I still have this panel in the way but it's that 10 at the very top you can actually see someone already had one kind of spliced in this manner here um, with another one of these fuses um, so let's see if I don't interrupt that one because I do need to wire mine and then I'm thinking about I'll just ground it right there on that screw right there. Two hours later. Boys, we, uh, we effed up a little bit. I never measured if the cable is going to reach from here over to the driver's side of the thing. I thought that it would have enough play given the amount of wire I had for the oxygen sensor. Uh, but the power one is definitely a lot shorter so I stopped in at Home Depot. I uh, picked up some extra wire, uh, and I picked up some of these little small adapters uh, to rewire it. Basically, I just need to extend it where I have a little bit more distance just so I can make sure that I have it there. Last thing you want is it to be extremely tight, and then you do something and it unplugs. So I'm going to go ahead and get that fixed now, cut up here, and uh, hopefully we can get it powered up. Now the last wire is kind of doing the same thing, following the same exact process. 
Um, I temporarily bring it up here through the shift boot cover. Um, and then I just refish it back down. It's just so I can basically grab it and then relocate it down here. All right, so we have it installed. I'll comb over to this now. I'm just gonna quickly uh, power it up. I've actually had the battery disconnected for the last couple days because it was completely dead. So I unplugged it from the car so I can actually charge it. So I'm gonna plug it back in. Um, see if the gauge actually shows that it's heating up and uh, go from there. So we got everything wired up. Um, I actually had already tested it one time and it um, it would gain power but it wouldn't uh, respond after that. I realized that I had the oxygen sensor still loose. So let's try it out now. Just giving it an ignition. Oh, and we have life. Fantastic. Now I can't start it. My son is sleeping, um, but fantastic. Looks like it's doing exactly what he's doing. Wide band is installed, ready to rock and roll. Now I haven't been able to road test it yet, mainly because radiator shot on this thing, so it's not gonna be moving anytime soon, but it is installed, it is heating uh, the way it's supposed to. So we should be a-okay. We'll test it soon once I get the radiator installed. Should be in about two weeks, and then the next big event will be March 2nd. If you haven't yet, like and subscribe to the video. If you have any questions, drop a comment below, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.